Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at a rather unique mini PC. This is called the Mission One, and it's powered by an operating system called Endless OS. It's an open source Linux-based operating system designed for the developing world. And if it looks like wood, it is. It's actually bamboo uh, wrapped around this little mini computer. And we're going to be taking a look at what it is and how its operating system works here in just a second. I do want to mention, though, in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge from Mission. However, all the opinions you're about to hear here are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. Now, when I unboxed this a couple of days ago on my extra channel, this looks very familiar to me. And as it turns out, uh, this is exactly the same computer as something I reviewed three years ago. Uh, Gigabyte has a computer line called Bricks, which are mini PCs like this one. And they had a fanless PC called the N2807 that we spent a lot of time with here on the channel. In fact, it was one of my first mini PC reviews. Uh, that is what this is. It's the exact same computer computer. It's BIOS told me as much. Uh, so if you want to see how you can upgrade this and add RAM and storage to it, uh, check out that series down below uh, because I, it's the same hardware. There's really no point in going through it all again. And actually, this one is harder to get at because they glued the uh, computer portion to the bamboo and you've got to remove the rubber feet to get uh, into everything. And I think if you're techie enough to take one of these things apart and upgrade it, uh, you'll save a lot of money by buying that Bricks Mini PC for 99 bucks, adding some RAM and storage, and probably getting in at half the price that uh, this one is selling for, which is currently $249. Now inside is that Celeron N2807 processor. It's got two gigabytes of RAM and a 500 gigabyte spinning hard drive. Again, $249 for that. You've got a single USB 3 port in the front here. You've got VGA out and audio out on the side. On the back, you've got HDMI out. I think this is 100 megabit Ethernet. I don't think they uh, had gigabit on that one. Uh, two USB 2.0 ports. I've got a keyboard dongle in there uh, and your power thing in there. And then the rest of it is just some vent in this review, we're really going to focus a lot on the Endless OS, which is the operating system powering this. It's a Linux-based operating system that's been designed to help people establish some literacy, some basic literacy in how to use a computer. So those are the things that we're going to look at in this review. And the operating system is available for free on the Endless website. So I'll put a link down below for that. So if you want to do this yourself and run this operating system for a friend or somebody, you could probably piece this system together, again, for a lot less money, but uh, we're going to look at what the total package is here with this because you can buy it, plug it in, and use it without an internet connection. So let's take a look and see what it does. All right, so we are all booted up and running now, and I did want to make clear that this computer is not fanless, even though the one it is based on is. Uh, so there's a small fan that kicks on from time to time, and you'll probably hear the hard drive whirring as well. Now, this is the home screen of the Endless OS, and it reminds me a lot of a smartphone, and that's not by accident because uh, the places they are marketing uh, their hardware and software typically are in developing countries where there is far greater smartphone adoption than there is PC adoption. So they wanted to follow something that people were very familiar with. You have all your apps laid out here, and you can easily uh, get to them there. There is an app store down here at the bottom where you can find more apps to install. You can only install apps that they have curated and added to their app store. So for example, I could add Firefox here. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other stuff here like World Literature that uh, is already installed on the device. And uh, these are things that all are maintained by Mission uh, through their endless operating system. You cannot install things from other sources yet for security purposes. I have noticed there's a couple of little things that are uh, bugging me on this, like there's an update here that's kind of stuck and won't update itself. Now, one thing to note here is that I am completely off the internet right now. So my Wi-Fi is off, the Ethernet is not connected, but I can go up here and do a search for uh, space, for example, and I'll get a bunch of uh, results on that. So for example, here I've got uh, some apps that are already installed, some games that are on the device. I also have uh, encyclopedia links here. So I can go and click on space on the encyclopedia link. And what it's going to do is pull up the encyclopedia app, which is basically an offline version of Wikipedia. And that app will get updated over time. And as new articles are written or changed, uh, those changes will come down with each app update. But these computers are designed to operate asynchronously in that uh, they will only get on the internet perhaps maybe a couple of times a month if they're in a place with very strict data caps or very spotty internet access. Uh, these things will work without that connection and keep those articles offline and then download updates as they come out. So uh, if you are struggling with that or you want to keep your kids off the internet yet still have access to things like Wikipedia and other services, uh, you'll have them there. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff that just came on this thing out of the box. So there's a, a whole section on math. I think they're using some of the Khan Academy videos that they have available offline on here as well. So uh, 
uh, there's quite a bit to choose from. The apps do take a little bit of time to load up. As you can see, this is not the world's fastest computer. I have noticed sometimes the apps crash and you have to load them back up again to try to get everything up and running. So as you can see right there, it just kind of goes to nothing. Uh, so there are some little glitches here and there that I keep encountering and uh, hopefully this will get corrected as things move on. But I really wanted to show you some of the offline math stuff and unfortunately I could not get it to run on here. But it did come loaded up with a lot of open source applications that did work that you've probably heard of before. So Audacity here is available for audio editing. Uh, you've got LibreOffice with uh, spreadsheets and databases and word processing documents. The GIMP is on here as well for image editing and a whole bunch of other stuff is available too. So a lot of the popular uh, open source alternatives to what you might find on Windows are available on here. Although I did find that it was a bit clunky in its overall interface. So for example, if I have an app loaded up here and it's uh, going full screen, I can't launch another app uh, just by clicking down here where the start menu might be. It's just kind of like an about screen where it says which user is logged in. You can have multiple users popped in uh, as well as a settings option. Uh, to get those apps loaded up, you have to go down here to the hot corner, uh, click on this, get back to the desktop, and then uh, click on the other uh, application that you want to load up. So it's not as intuitive. It's kind of hard to jump around. You can pin things down here to the bottom. So for example, if I wanted calculator always to be here, I could pin it there and it will stay there, but a little too much extra work to go through when it would be nice just to have a launcher that was more accessible. So you always have to go back to the desktop uh, or click down here for uh, launching applications. I also noticed that there were apps installed that I couldn't find on my desktop. So I have to go into the app store here and then search for them and then pin them to the desktop. So for example, uh, the astronomy app is just not accessible to me on the desktop. So what I have to do here is go over to the astronomy uh, app in the app store, click add to desktop. Uh, that puts it on the desktop and then I can move it around and maybe put it in one of the folders if I wanted to. Unfortunately, this is another one of those apps that doesn't boot up. So we can't play with this one either, but uh, it does give you an idea as to uh, how it all works. I can drop it in here to the curiosity folder and now it's a part of that. So uh, for you know an operating system that's trying to make things easier, this doesn't quite get there for, for me because you really have to hunt around to find the apps that you've even installed on here uh, without a very simple launcher. So there's a few things here that just don't feel right to me. And it's of course not right that the stuff that I want to run like math here uh, just continually crashes every time it boots up. Now I'm sure these things are going to be correctable over time, but it has been a very frustrating experience uh, playing with this PC. You do get some cool stuff here like this Minecraft knockoff and whatnot, but uh, still for $249 for a essentially three-year-old piece of technology, uh, they could have done a better job of having a better user experience here when they launched this product because right now it can't run half the software they've written for it, at least in my experience, this keeps crashing. Uh, and that's not a good sign, especially if this is a computer that may not get online right of way. So there's a lot of potential with this, but I think it's just not there yet to a point where I could recommend this as something that uh, is worth the price tag, especially when you can buy a Windows computer with a Windows license installed or a Chromebox, for example, all of which will run faster for the same money or less. And when it does go online, you can get it on the internet with a Chromium browser. They also have the regular version of Chrome available in addition to Firefox. So as a web browsing device, it seems to be uh, just fine and uh, basic transportation, but it does work. It works about as well as that Bricks PC that it's based on uh, worked a couple of years ago. So not the fastest web browsing device, but uh, comparable with other devices in its class. And uh, I think you'll have a, a decent experience, at least if you're just looking for a basic web browser. But again, you can buy a computer like a Chromebox or a Windows PC that browses the web faster for less money. And on the Octane benchmark test running in Google Chrome, we got a score of 7,372, which is a, a pretty good score for what it is. It's in line with other devices running with the same chips from this generation of hardware. So that's good. The operating system isn't introducing too much overhead. It also runs Windows if you want to install it or uh, have it plugged in separately with an uh, external drive or something. It runs other uh, Linux operating systems also. But the question is, is it worth $249? Well, if you are a technically oriented person and want to run other operating systems beyond endless on here, it's definitely not worth that price. You can get a uh, current generation hardware with a Windows license uh, similarly equipped for uh, the same or less money. But uh, the big question is, is it worth it with the endless OS on it right now? And I would say probably not, just given how much uh, of a frustrating time I've had trying to get things to work on it. So uh, again, we'll go back into the physics app here. It will uh, load up the launch screen and then it will quickly just dump me back out to the desktop. Some of the apps work like the encyclopedia, but a lot of the other ones that are supposed to work offline don't. They don't even work when they're online either. And this is after running all the updates and everything. I got a bunch of updates stuck on the uh, app store there. Again, if this is being marketed to someone who doesn't know how to use a computer, they're going to have a very frustrating time with this, especially if they are offline uh, when they plug 
plug it in as it's designed to work. So it needs some work there. I'm going to keep an eye on Endless OS. Uh, you can download that operating system for free from their website and run it on your own computers to see how it works. Uh, so maybe we'll keep an eye on it and see if there's any updates down the road. I like where they're going with this. I really appreciate what they're trying to do, especially in uh, parts of the developing world where they don't have uh, steady access to the internet. This does provide uh, the best of the internet offline if it works, but uh, right now it doesn't, and that is a problem and something I can't recommend to you to buy. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.